welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hello, folks. It's Liz Soria, your tax advisor at the, at the Tax Advisor and Business Coaching Sense podcast. Um, as usual, I have amazing, amazing, really guests, but this one has to have a very special um, part in my life because I really believe that he can help so many of you how to lead, especially when you have employees and you're growing. And sometimes we feel so hesitant and so confused to how to take the next step, right? And being a good leader is so important. So our topic is going to be about how to be a great leader. And I have an amazing guest by the name of Anton Gunn. Uh, he is considered one of the top leadership uh, leadership uh, advisors, and he is one of the, one of the biggest advisors for big top U.S. brand companies. But now it doesn't stop there, and this is what's so amazing about Anton is that he actually has served President Obama as a top spoken man, and not only him, he has actually helped many of a, of, of a lot of recent presidents, and. I'm so honored to have you here, Anton. Thank you so much for really making the time to, you know, come to our show and uh, be part of it. So welcome, welcome. Well, thank you for having me, Liz. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's a, a pleasure to be with you today and so happy to be with your, your viewers and listeners. Thank you so much. And, you know, like I said, today's topic is so interesting because I think, um, and, and, and we're kind of chatting about this uh, for the audience to know, that a lot of times, uh, you know, we start a business because whether we have a passion or because we have an experience and we know we're good on it. And, you know, it's time to kind of let go of the job, the nine to five job, and move forward with our true, you know, calling. Right. And, and I really believe that sometimes, well, we, we haven't really been uh, trained uh, how to be a, a true leader because we were so used to used to following others as we were an employee that now we find ourselves in a situation that we might be expanding and hiring employees or other type of staff and how do we become a good leader a good example uh, to our staff and also for our you know uh, other businesses around us please Anthem. yeah that's a that's a great place to start um, you know most people start off their careers, they, they learn from their family. Your job is to grow up, go to school, get a good job and work there for 30 years of your life. But we know with the current environment, the current economy, many people are now recognizing that that's just not enough to be able to work a job. And people have a lot of belief inside of themselves that there's an opportunity out there for them that they wanna seek. And that opportunity sometimes calls you to become an entrepreneur, to become a business owner of your own, to become a leader in your own right, to bring your product and service into the market. However, when we spend most of our careers working inside of organizations, we begin to adopt that organizational mindset, that organizational culture, and we really learn how to manage people rather than leading people. Uh, I understand wholeheartedly how bad culture can create bad leaders and disengaged team members. Nearly 30 years ago, I was a disengaged team member and a marginal performer on a bad team. I was trapped in a bad culture because I had a bad leader. Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to get out of that environment and to get into a place where my job has been solely focused on helping to build world-class leadership cultures for every leader who wants to lead an organization. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you started your own business, you got to recognize that the way you get to success is about leadership and not about management. Management is about minimalization. It's about checking boxes, making sure you know when people are going to lunch, when they're coming back, did they clock in or clock out? Those are minimal frameworks. But as a leader, is the question you should be asking every day. How can I inspire action and create a lasting impact on every person on my team and every customer that I touch? And in order for you to be able to do that, you have to have an understanding and a framework of what it takes to be a world-class leader. 
and everyone should work with and have the opportunity to work for a world-class leader. And world-class leadership is something that I've learned through my life experiences with five U.S. presidents. I've learned what it takes, and I've provided a leadership development framework at all levels. So whether you're an owner or someone in the C-suite or you're a frontline person, how do you provide a framework to help you to engage your team more deeply, act with conviction, and have a lasting impact? And I'm happy to share these principles, and I, I published them in my new book, The Presidential Principles, How to Inspire Action and Create Lasting Impact, because I think the goal is we all should try to have a legacy lasting impact on every person that we serve and every customer that we touch. I agree. I agree with you. And, and, and again, just to kind of touch base, I think a lot of times uh, we can have a lot of years uh, you know, of expertise, again, because we work for someone else. Um, but when we find ourselves uh, on our own, um, I think it's so extremely important. This is something I have brought up in so many other you know, uh, episodes is that we really need to create an inner circle. We need to build our own team. Um, and we need others who have that knowledge that we're lacking to help us lead our way to success. And someone like you can come so extremely uh, you know, helpful because a lot of times, and I, and I speak from, for, for myself that, you know, I have found myself in the situation in the beginning that as you start hiring staff and people, uh, when is it that you realize, uh, you know, that you need to lead your staff? It's important. You are the example of the company. So, you know, I think that's, that's something that I would like to touch a little more ba base with you. Is that okay, Anthony? Yeah. Yes, without a doubt. So I, I'll just g give it to you, the, this framework. Um, you from the very beginning if you started your own business and you need to hire people you have to understand that every person that comes to work for you or comes to work with you have three questions in their mind they may never verbalize these questions to you but these are the questions that they're thinking about every day when they're evaluating who they're going to work for and question number one will you help me every employee wants to know Will you help them as a leader to be successful? Because everybody wants success no matter what job they do. And so you got to ask, answer the question as a business owner, are you ready to help the people that you lead? The second question is, do you care about me? And if you want to bring people onto your team, you got to care about the people that you invite into your organization. You got to care about their hopes, their dreams, their desires, and what they want out of the opportunity. You want them to work for you and to be very productive and to be successful, but you have to understand what they care about and care about the things that they care about. So will you help me and do you care about me? And the third question that you have to answer for every person you bring into your organization on your team is they're going to ask you, can I trust you? Can I trust that you're going to do what you say that you're going to do, that we're going to work precipitately towards our goals and are we going to try to be successful as a business can i trust that everything is going to be the way that you laid it out to me and so in order for you to answer those questions as a leader there's several things that you have to do first you got to be what i call leadership as a verb and not a noun that your actions as a leader will always be more important than your words we we don't want to give lip service to people and say hey i'm committed to success I'm committed to selling a thousand widgets to the market. doesn't matter what you say you're committed to. What do your actions look like? Do you show up on time? Are you the first in and are you the last to leave? Or is your team beating you to the office every single day? Um, or do they not understand what you're doing to help the company to grow? People need to see your actions. And that's the first principle uh, that I lay out in my book is that you have to be willing to inspire others through your individual actions. That's how you show people that you care. That's how you show people that they can trust you. And that's how you can show people that you're ready to help them because you're willing to get into the trenches and work right along. Anthony, you know, so far you've given such wonderful tips and recommendations. And I really feel that a lot of times, like I was saying before, uh, when we start expanding our businesses, um, it could be difficult um, to how to lead, you know, and be a good example, I guess, to the rest of our staff. And you brought a point that was very good is taking action and showing your staff that you're there for them. And I think sometimes there's a little bit of misconception, and hopefully you can correct me on this, that sometimes we'll 
as we become successful, some of us become a little bit ego, and we have this little ego burst that we think oh, we're more special, we're better than our staff, and I think that creates conflict. Of, you know, of really the staff being there for you because I really believe that. Um, you know, if you take care of your staff, your staff will take care of you, but especially we take care of your customers. So yeah. would you like to add something to that, Chris? Oh, yes. That's an incredible point. And I think you hit the nail on the head is that the, the greatest leaders have learned how to listen, think, and then act and be intentional of learning from the people that they lead. Uh, this is one principle that I learned very importantly from President Barack Obama is that a leader may be in a leadership role, but it doesn't mean you have all of the answers. And you should actually take the time to listen to the people that you lead because they'll give you a framework of where you need to go. Your expertise is not uh, supreme in all things. You may know a lot to start a business and it may be your idea for the product. It may be your idea for the service, but the only way you get a service to market and the only way you get a product to market is when you rely on the team that you have and so you can't be egocentric you can't be egotistical at all about what you do you got to remember that your team brings tremendous value and they're the ones who are going to take care of the customer and they're completely a reflection on you and so a principle that i lay out to leaders is you got to learn how to engage with your team you got to practice intentionality in listening and learning and caring about those that you lead. And that keeps your ego in check when you spend time listening and learning and caring about those that you lead. Amazing words, really. Um, and very profound, by the way. Um, and, and I kind of brought this up because I've seen this through my years of, of, of you know, working for myself that um, dealing with small businesses, uh, some of them are great bosses. They yeah. really are. Um, they're upbeat. Uh, they have a good attitude. They take care of their staff very well. And guess what? Company is going very well. The profits mm -hmm. are keep going up. <laughs> yeah. But yet, the ones that take that other negative approach, I wanted to find them that way, they head down. Because if your staff is not happy and they're not being supportive and they're just coming for that paycheck and they don't mm -hmm. have a passion and they really enjoy what they do mm -hmm. uh, and they look up to you but they can't because they know that you're too busy for them and you're too far to be reached, yes. um, then they're starting to feel really small. And I kind of, kind of sense that from some of these companies that I have helped. Um, and, and it was a good point that you brought that up. Sometimes leadership is not about I'm superior, I'm better than my staff and people around me. It's about learning how to care and, and, and make the rest of your people a, a stronger team because yeah, and you, you need support. Yes, and, and I'll, tell, I'll tell you another thing that I share all the time is that people need to understand that if you don't value your team, if you don't invest in your team, they will quit on you. And what I mean quit is that they won't quit physically, they'll quit mentally. And that's more dangerous than quitting physically. I agree. And see, people, um, people need their jobs. They love working, they need money. Most people need money. And for people who work in a toxic environment with bad leaders, they won't physically quit, but they'll mentally quit first. And these are the people who'll be the ones who show up at 8.59 to work, and at 4.59, they're clocking out and they're in the parking lot on their way home. They won't go above and beyond. They won't go the extra mile. They won't stay late to work on a project and they won't invest in being successful. So your responsibility as a leader is to ward this off by being a great motivator for your team. You gotta use your words, your emotions, your tools and your tactics to be a catalyst for them. And again, your daily actions, your daily deeds will be the reason that people will be inspired. If you look throughout history of any level of government or service or any business, the people in the company and the people in the organization are inspired by the leader. I mean, if you look at Apple, Steve Jobs was an inspiring leader. Uh, he motivated people by his actions, by his energy level, and that's what made people want to be so committed to Apple. If you walk into any Apple store, the people who work there love their jobs. They would do it for free. Um, because they love the product and the service so much is because they built a culture that inspires people. So if you're starting a business, you might have a great product, but you've got to get great 
leadership abilities and learn how to inspire and motivate your team and make sure that they don't quit on you. And you got to take an interest and investment in them because that's how people feel valued is when they know that the people that they report to, that they work for, care about them, want them to be successful, and are trustworthy to deliver on what they say that they were going to deliver on. That's amazing. And I do believe that when your staff and people around you believe in you as a leader, they will do anything for you. Yes, they will. Really to run the extra mile, even if it means they're not getting paid for. Right? Yes. And yes. That's amazing because I think we all been there some way, somehow, where yeah. somebody has treated us so equally, so 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 respectfully, yes. um, in, in, in such a humane way that you know it's like sort of like as as the thing is as species as, as humans that we are. We have a tendency if somebody does something nice for us, we just kind of want to return that favor because it makes us feel so good inside, right? Yeah. It yes. would be beautiful if all of us out there, as, as we're expanding so many businesses, uh, you know, small businesses are going to be million dollars of company and revenues. If we could just have that mindset, yes. really that mindset of saying that, you know, just because I'm successful in the business doesn't make me think that I am superior to anybody else. I'm still in the learning curves. I'm still there to give a good example to everyone around us. Isn't that wonderful when you see yourself coming in with a big smile on their faces and they enjoy what they're doing and you make them part of almost like what we call a family feeling, you know, like you're part of my family. And I yeah. think that as humans, again, I really mean this, um, and I might repeat myself on this, is we are full of emotions. We're not machines and we never be machines. Yes. So it's not about the fat paycheck that you can pay me. It's about how you make me feel as a person that I'm part of, a, you know, your project. I'm part of yes. your company that I do something to really help you grow in your business. And I might be a little tiny part of it, but it makes me feel damn special. <laughs> yes. yes, you're right. You know, I, I read a statistic um, in Forbes uh, a couple years ago that said, on average, 2 million people quit their job every month in the United States of America. And 75% of those that quit their job, they quit because of leadership. They don't quit because of pay. They don't quit because of the hours. They quit because they work for a leader that doesn't value them, that doesn't understand them, doesn't care about them and that they can't trust. And that shows you that leadership is more important than anything. Uh, John Maxwell, John C. Maxwell says that everything rises and falls upon leadership. He's the number one business man management guru in the country according to Inc. Magazine for more than 10 years. And when he says, Leadership is everything. Everything rises and falls on leadership. It lets you know the businesses who find a way to lead in a way that inspires and motivates their teams and values them as family members, as team members, and really is committed to their success are the ones who have the highest level of productivity, that have the highest level of return on investment, and of course, are the ones who dominate the marketplace. And so this is a lesson that every leader in every business at every level should take ownership of. It's about what you do for your team that will determine your output as a business. Beautiful words and very, very positive ones. You know, and then uh, I know you have a book um, and the book uh, hopefully is available on Amazon where, yeah. where audience can go and purchase. Uh, um, do you want to talk about any specific chapter that might have something that the person didn't want to open up the book and go straight to that <laughs> chapter or anything like that? So, yeah, so I'll, I'm happy to do two things. So, number one, the book is available on Amazon. The title of the book is called The Presidential Principles, How to Inspire Action and Create Lasting Impact. It's been a number one uh, new release on Amazon in a couple categories, so I'm very excited about that. Um, but there's a lot that I can talk about in the book that I think would be really important uh, for me to share with you. Um, the book is, is, is framed up into three frameworks. There are three value sets in the book. First value set is around service. The second value set is around empowerment. And the third value set is around legacy. And that the first premise is that as a leader, if you learn how to serve first and lead second, you'll have the greatest impact. And empowerment is the context that a leader's responsibility is to give your team the tools, the information, and the resources for them to be successful.
that many times, you know, you have team members who have impediments in the way. Your team may say, I want to get the job done, but I have this barrier in my way. Right. Your job as a leader is to take those barriers out of their way, to, to remove any barrier that keeps them from being successful in the business. That's what your job is. And the third premise is around legacy. And legacy can be summed up in a quote from Miles Monroe that success without a successor is a failure. And that is if you don't use your gifts, your talents and your abilities as a leader to leave an inheritance for those that come along after you, you might achieve success in business, but you'll never achieve significance. And if you chase significance, success will be a byproduct of being significant. So how do you put yourself, your business, your company in a position that you want to be significant in the lives of every customer? The reason why the book is titled The Presidential Principles, because yeah. presidents are always significant in our lives. Whether we want them to be or not, by virtue of their leadership role, they make significant decisions. If I say the names Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, Roosevelt, Kennedy, we all know that these men passed away a long time ago but what they did has a significant impact on our lives today. And so how do you become a leader that has a presidential impact on your customers? How do you become a leader that has a presidential impact on your family? How do you become a leader that has a presidential impact in your industry? You can do that by mastering the seven principles that I lay out in this book. And for your listeners, and I'm going to do something special for your listeners I don't do this often, but because uh, of your audience, I'm going to give you something special. Uh, I'm going to give you a free chapter of my book, a free chapter. You can download a free chapter of my book by going to antongun.com slash free chapter, and I'll give you chapter seven in my book, which is called ACT, and it's a chapter that's focused on action and some great leadership principles for you as a business owner. Again, Anton Gunn slash free chapter. You, you and your listeners can have that free chapter. And of course, it should give you some insight and I'll give you a way you can purchase the rest of the book if you so love to choose to on Amazon. Well, first of all, thank you for your generosity. And, and second of all, I'm going to buy your book. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a former, yeah, listen, I'm a former believer that, that we learn from great minds and you're one of them. Uh, so, and I really say with, with, with a lot of, uh, you know, um, honesty as I'm expressing it, because I think that there's so much to be learned from others out there. And, uh, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. There's people out there who can really help. And I hope the audience who are listening to the podcast will prefer to watch, right, our uh, interview. They can go to our YouTube channel. And I know Anton started his YouTube channel, so look up his name. So he's going to start hopefully doing a few little uh, tips and, uh, you know, information. He's going to be updating his channel too, right, Anton? Uh, yes. So hopefully uh, you can still stay connected with him because it's important. Uh, what I tell folks is we learn so much from all these, you know, interviews, but what matters is, and this is so important really is action. It is so true. We can learn and learn and get inspired and push forward. And then, you know, it's like those people that go to seminars and listen to all these famous speakers and they, they get so far up and, you know, two, three days later, they go back to their routine. I don't want my audience to do that. I want the best for them. And that's why I do everything I can to bring amazing guests like yourself to really bring all this value because I really want the best for them. And I really do believe they're an economy, they're the force of a future here in the United States. And we're making things happen. We're improving the economy. We're creating jobs. So thank you, Anthony, for being there. And before I let you go, I have to pick one thing out of your brain. It's really important. And I think that if the audience could ask you this is what an amazing experience must be to be in front of so many presidents. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and help them some way, somehow, with your words of, you know, of knowledge, yeah. guide it's, them in a way to make a better leader because it's leading millions of people. That must be such an amazing blessing or gift that you must have to, to do that. So how, how has that experience have touched your life knowing that your words can make an impact? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I will tell you this, it's the most humbling uh, place to be in in life that I never would imagine, you know, that I would grow up to have these level of experiences 
uh, with the leaders of the free world. And not only that, to have one in particular uh, take my words, use them as their own, and use it to make better decisions. Um, I think we all have some level of uh, encounters and experiences with leaders in our life. Mine just happened to be with five U.S. presidents, and, I, and I'm grateful for it. Um, but I will tell you, I, I just feel like, um, you know, we all have different experiences in business or in our lives where there's been a leader who we have looked up to, that we've been inspired by, and that asked us for an idea or an opinion. And, and when we share it, it, it's the most humbling responsibility in the world to know that your words have made a difference to someone else. And so I take solace in that, you know, my experience is, is unique for me to say five U.S. presidents, I've had encounters with them. Amazing. But um, there have been many more leaders that, that I've also had encounters with that weren't presidents that I think were difference-making experiences in my life. And so I take every ownership of, of each opportunity, and I think we all have the responsibility to reflect on them and to know uh, what we've done for other people and how meaningful our words can be. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for all your information and all your great tips. Um, like I said, my uh, motivation to start this podcast was to help the regular Joe and, and Jane out there uh, yes. who has an inspiration, has a passion to, you know, create something that it's going to be a legacy to, because like you said, it's not only starting the job and making a, a dollar. It's about what you leave behind once you're gone out of this physical, you know, matter, uh, as we call, you know, our planet. Um, yes. And I think that's the, the most amazing feeling that we can have that even after we're gone, we still have that beautiful legacy that people can remember our names and say, hmm, what did that person did that changed this world yeah. and made it a better one? Yeah. Some way, somehow. So, Anthony, thank you so much for your time because I know you're such a busy person and just making the time to be here in such a humble show as I provide, like I said, the best value I can to my audience and from the bottom of my heart, I want you know the best success for everyone out there. And again, once again, before we wrap up, your contact information, um, that way people can reach out. If they have any questions, would it be okay if they make any comments in the yes. in the YouTube, you know, uh, comment box, you might be able to answer some of those questions, yes. please? I'd be happy to answer questions. You can reach me. Uh, my website is antongun.com. That's how you can find me. I'm on all angles of social media. Uh, my Twitter is Anton J. Gunn, Instagram, Anton J. Gunn, LinkedIn, same way, Facebook, the same way, and of course, on YouTube, where I'm growing my channel, an opportunity for you to subscribe uh, and to see some of my videos. I offer video tips every week on how to help you to become a better leader. That's awesome. That's great. That is really good news. Do you hear that, everyone? Okay, good. No excuse then. And then once again, thank you so much uh, for really taking, because I know you have a busy schedule and, and, and uh, financially you do very well and you deserve it. Um, but coming here, um, you know, giving so much good content, um, and people don't realize, but, you know, free content really does have a value. It's yes, it does. We do it because we really, truly know that we have a calling to help others out there, even when they cannot afford us, because it's just a duty that I think we all have as humans, right, to give That's out. Correct. That's so correct. That's correct. Add value. Always about adding value. Always the value. And again, and I hope for those people, uh, before I finalize this, because he's a master in what he does, please, uh, you know, bosses, owners of companies, Consider, consider getting the proper training and understanding, shifting your mindset because we're all here to change and we can change in a positive way. Take care of your staff because they will take care of you at the end and that is such a true fact. So yeah. again, does not impose our, you know, our ego and our personality and our title, right? Uh, let's just team up and be part of one and that's how we can truly succeed and help others. Thank you once again, Anthony. It's been such a great honor and pleasure to have you on my show. And I wish you a lot of success and keep pushing forward and advising all our presidents what we need to do, please. Thank you. Take Thank care you. of yourself. Thank, Thank you so much. You.